This is Cents Per Mile, featuring Charles Gracie, Paul Gibson, and Josh Haynes. Everyone knows the trucking industry has issues, but most people are afraid to talk about it. Someone's got to do it. With loads of recruiting and marketing experience and backed by the largest driver audience in the world, we deliver carriers the driver perspective, find solutions, and help make sense make sense. Thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. Hey, I'm Josh Haynes, and Paul's looking like Sarah McLaughlin over there with uh, Saving the Animals on a shirt. What are we talking about today, Charles? We're talking post Truck Drivers Appreciation Week. What did people do? What didn't they do? And highlighting the ones that did it right. Probably a lot of what they didn't do. Um, but <laughs> you know, that's just kind of our thing. Um, you know, and and what uh, is important? You know, really looking at it, looking at what got looked at, what didn't get looked at, and what should have gotten looked. Uh, but that being said, we are on Spotify, we're on iHeartRadio, Amazon, anywhere you get your podcasts, plus YouTube. So if you could go like, subscribe, rate, uh, whatever you need to do on the platform where you consume our content, that would be great. Gets us picked up, helps us uh, get a further reach and more people to see the show. You know what else is great? SensePermilePodcast.com, where you can submit a topic to be a guest or even to become a sponsor sponsor who's our sponsor today charles we got tafts put your trucking business in the hammer lane and check out tafts from one hour freight factoring to cost saving benefits to business to financing to consulting they solve real world challenges so you can focus on the road ahead go to tafts.com yep and another thing that you can visit is freight waves so we are on their network uh, they're fantastic, and they actually throw one of the biggest parties in freight every year. It's the Future of Freight Festival in Chattanooga, um, and we will actually be there this year, um, which is exciting for some people, probably less for others, uh, but it's going to be a good time. And hey, and you can you can uh, you can have fun with us also. Uh, because we want you to be there, there is a link that you can click uh, or a QR code that you can scan and you can get a steep discount because, well, you know some people uh, and that's how trucking works, it seems like. So that being said, it is time for the news. All right, so it's time for 10 to News, where we go back over the past few weeks, find some of the coolest, weirdest, most relevant stories from CDL Life. Uh, and we talk about them a little bit. The first one is um, there was a truck driver who got fired for raising concerns about fatigued driving. Basically, the company wanted him to drive past um, his allotted hours. So his drivers are regulated. They can only drive so many hours. They wanted him to drive past that. And he said no. And so he actually ended up getting like attendance violations um, and fired. So he went and fought that and he won uh 148 or $184,000 um in a lawsuit and you know drivers are are regulated companies obviously have to make profit back and forth um but the way we treat our drivers I'm just kind of getting tired of it well i mean if you look at the breakdown here osha ordered the company to reinstate the truck driver and then pay him $58,000 in backed wages and interest 115,000 in compensatory damages and then 10,000 impunitive. I mean, this is exactly what needs to happen for people to start respecting the drivers as the captain of that ship and dictating what's safe to them. Absolutely. You know, cause I mean, it just, it's exhausting. Well, cause you know, everyone stands behind them when there's a wreck. So, I mean, at least let them decide what's safe operating. I'm also fatigued by that. Um, so with that, there was a wreck on US-95 that closed the highway all day where a wood truck had a collision with a battery truck. Um, turns out that both drivers uh, did have minor injuries, but everybody's okay. And as of right now, nobody was charged. Terrible dad joke. But what's next, Paul? <laughs> all right. So the next one is we actually had covered this previously. Um, about those trucks that were, you know, <clears throat> they had all the crab uh, that, that got stole out of that trailer. Um, I believe it was up in Philly. Um, and they actually, uh, so the title of the, the headline is, Four Suspects in Custody After Years of East Coast Meat and Seafood, seafood Cargo Thefts. Um, so they believe they caught those guys. Um, you know, it had been going on for a while. You know, they're from New Jersey. That checks out. Um, but it, like, I guess they, they tried to escape in a stolen car. One guy escaped on foot. 
um and the cops looked at that and they were like that seems fishy and um so yeah they 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 got you know a whole sea of results by by finally getting a hold of these guys was that two dad dad jokes in one news article charles i made three on the first one and you didn't pick any of them up (laughs) because they were all bad i mean great they were great paul that's fine that's that's how dad jokes work um, but it is nice to see that that they did that, you know, especially because on the East Coast, they have actual seafood, you know, whereas like me being in Kansas City, most of the time when I eat a lobster or something like that, I'm like, is this how, how? Just like a new truck. It's new to you. It's fresh to you. Right. It's yeah, you know, for sure. It's like, you know, it's like going out and buying a 2018. It's like it's n- new ish. Can you just imagine being in the slammer and like I'm in here because I stole seafood like. You schmuck. It was a lot of seafood, okay? <laughs> yeah, that's, yeah, no, that'd be, um, you'd probably get made fun of. They'd definitely probably get under your shell. I bet he's sitting in jail and he's a little salty. <laughs> oh. What's next in the news, Paul? <laughs> um, I, I just don't know of us being able to make these jokes and you not being able to appreciate them makes us better dads. Anyway, um, I have to ask CJ next time he's on. Uh, so this one probably hits a little bit close to you. Um, so it was like a real life slasher film, kind of. So there had been a slew of vandalism in Georgia and kind of Florida in that area. Um, and so uh, Tennessee Sheriff is trying to basically charge this guy who's been accused of over $31,000 in damage. Uh, in one stop at an I-40 truck stop. And so he just go around and slash people's, like, truck's tires. He's done it on on-ramps. He's done it on off-ramps. He's done it inside of um, the truck stops. He's done it several places. He just goes and just slashes their tires. We should make this guy famous for all the wrong reasons. I mean, this is terrible. I mean, in a market like this where every dollar counts, go, you have someone going out there slashing tires. Can you go out and slash bills and something else useful? I mean, and I know that it doesn't matter because it's an awful thing. I am very curious to find out what this guy's motivation was. They got they got a good picture of him. Like, hey, if you can't find this guy after this, I mean, we got serious problems. Oh no, that's uh, that's uh, what what we had in that picture in the article is actually uh, taken from the dash cam footage. But yeah, that's some serious stuff. I um, uh, I didn't have a joke to make because that's they would all fall flat. Anyway, he is the joke. He is a walking joke. <laughs> I mean, this is insane to be walking around slashing. Do something productive. Be better. My jokes aren't bad. You clearly just don't get them. It's time to go behind the desk. Hi, it's Christy with 10th Street. And National Truck Driver Appreciation Week was a roaring success. Let me fill you in on some of the things that 10th Street was able to do. So we did some social media contests and some sweepstakes throughout the week, and it was super fun for drivers to participate. We sponsored some lunches for some CDL schools. Um, We were also able to assemble an internal National Truck Driver Appreciation Week task force where myself and a few others evaluated incoming requests from our clients. One of the really exciting things that I heard about was one carrier who has 3,600 drivers, their whole leadership team made it a point to reach out to every single driver to personally thank them for their contributions that week. Super, super exciting. That carrier also received rewards from 10th Street to give out to their drivers to even further their efforts for National Truck Driver Appreciation Week. We did a sponsorship with ATA, which was super exciting. And then Becca Matthews and I also were on site with a carrier. Um, Again, we had a really, really great time celebrating National Truck Driver Appreciation Week. We love drivers. At TAFS, we offer unparalleled trucking excellence and service. Enjoy exclusive benefits like fantastic tire discounts and one-hour advances for quick cash. Recognized as the top factoring company in 2023, we're your partner for success. Access business loans, manage finances with ease through our client portal, F2 Fuel Card, and mobile app. Contact us now to see how we can help your trucking business thrive. All right, so it's time for Sense Makes Sense, and we're talking post-Truck Drivers Appreciation Week, and we couldn't talk about what people did right without talking about what they did wrong. So we've always talked on the show about, hey, who celebrates Drivers Appreciation Week and doesn't have any drivers there? 
or maybe captures the one or two that just finished orientation, put them on camera and put it up on social media. Uh, a lot of them do, by the way, spoiler alert. But there are a couple that did it right. So checking in with Decker Truck Lines, uh, they had put up a couple different things that they did for their drivers and they made it accessible to the ones that were there and not. Uh, they did a catered event each day they also gave gift cards out to the drivers that weren't able to make it in they did virtual events and then they tried to route every driver in the vicinity to one of their terminals so they can get barbecue or catered food i think that is tremendously uh an improvement over what historically happens where we capture one or two office employees a dispatcher a shop guy take a social media post and say happy drivers appreciation so kudos to decker for submitting that and trying to incorporate all their drivers yeah and i mean rti like so where where i came from you know like i that was my first experience with a trucking company um and they do it right um and it was it's it was crazy to leave there and then go to see how many companies do it wrong you know because that was my starting point and, and then going looking around but you know they're still at it so like bill the owner is actually there every day they try to route as many people in as they can and Bill is there all day, every day. We'll sit out there for hours and eat lunch and just shoot the shit with drivers. Um, and it's pretty awesome. And he'll actually talk to them about whatever they want. He doesn't just get really like, oh, hi, you know, and then take off. He'll like sit there and like, I've seen him like a driver will talk about something. He'll like grab them, go into his office and actually like break down their settlement with them if they have any concerns. And they throw one hell of a party. They do. They really do. Um, and their marketing uh, is great no bias there right um but no it's you know it's it's nice to look back and see that they're still at it um and there's there's a lot of companies who do do it right and either there is only so much you can do when drivers you know are out on the road you know kind of like we talked about last week it's like oh is a slice of pizza worth losing money over because you're in a situation where if you're not moving you're not making money but then there's people that are outside of the carriers making it accessible so seven fleet uh came across this nice story about them they wanted to make things accessible to the drivers, and a lot of people don't know that they have a whole diesel network. So they had free subs. They had free fajita tacos and chicken tacos. They had chicken, uh, coffee, and all kinds of different stuff available to the people that were coming through their fuel stops. And we got a couple cool guests coming on here in a little bit that are going to show things that even have more meaning to today's drivers than just you know some food or a barbecue. Well, yeah, because it's kind of like we talked about last week, you know, with that whole old CDL Life article about the driver's bill of rights. It's like, yes, we look at appreciating them through, you know, like, oh, you can get this free thing or, oh, we're going to route you in because we appreciate you and we want to show you in person, you know, because isolationism on the road, et cetera. Uh, but there's a lot of people that are out there appreciating drivers on a different level and trying to actually do the work, the terrible bureaucratic terrible bureaucratic legislative work to make it better and make actual like long lasting changes um like our next guest who we got charles we got louis from oida welcome to sense per mile again louis hey thanks for having me it's my pleasure you know we're talking about truck drivers appreciation week and the things people did to try to show their appreciation and you've been on the show and we've had great discussions about it it's more than one week but people got to start somewhere so at least we can hope they get that one week right so tell us a little bit about your thoughts on this well i agree i mean i think oh idea we try to celebrate and appreciate truckers every single solitary day um myself as a trucker uh, i guess I think some truck stops did a good job. Some places I did did okay. Most places, you know, here's your free hot dog if you're, you know, <laughs> or whatever. If you happen to get there. If you happen to get there when they're doing that, exactly. Um, but those social media posts, come on. Like, you tell me you don't feel appreciation when you scroll there and see the barbecue you couldn't attend? Yeah, exactly. So, you know, I, I you know, this was started by other organizations and folks who I think felt bad for what they've done to truckers over the last 50, 60 years. So, you know, and I'm not taking nothing against, I mean, I'm all for, again, we appreciate truckers every day and I'm glad that we have this. It's real freaking sad in this country that two or three years ago during COVID, our truckers were heroes right behind, you know, first responders and folks like that. And now, you know, here we are 
a couple years post-COVID, and all they are again is a big truck that's in the way, that's dirty, whatever, you know, people think of trucks, and which is usually not good, unfortunately. It, you know, it irritates me. I mean, we have T-shirts and stickers anywhere around here that says, if you don't like st trucks, quit buying stuff. And that's the truth. If you're going to buy things and you want things, you have to have trucks. So we can hate trucks or we can love trucks, but regardless, the men and women behind the wheel sacrifice on a daily, weekly, monthly, yearly basis. They miss time with their families, their friends. They have to drive in bad weather, good weather, terrible weather. They miss so many things out there. And while we're sleeping to get things where they need to be and get on our store shelves. And it's unfortunate that in this country of ours, where 70% plus of all freight moves exclusively on a truck, and I would challenge that the other 30% pretty much touch a truck somewhere along the way, the truckers are treated so poorly. And, and like there's not even humans behind the wheel. And, and it's real sad. But again, glad truck drive the week. You guys are doing a lot of stuff to bring awareness to that. I mean, a couple of things that I've been following you guys on that you, you're working on is the Got Truckers Act, the truck parking, the restroom access, the fight and speed limiter mandate. I mean, you guys have been busy. Yeah, and we continue to be. I mean, OIDA was formed in 1973 by a small group of truck drivers there in the Arab oil embargo. whole reason we were started was these truckers went to Washington to advocate and try to change some rules and regs for trucking, starting with fuel and the problems that we were the fuel surcharge. Here we are 51 years later, <laughs> jokingly, but sadly, still some of the same issues that they originally were fighting for were still fighting for. But yes. We try to come up with common sense and legislation and regulations that, one, make a trucker's life better, but plus make highways safer and everything. Now, sometimes it's a little bit of a tough deal because what works for one doesn't always work for the other. So it's a it's a fine thing, a hard thing sometimes to balance to try to do the right thing for the masses. But that's what we do. And, you know, we're a lot is different. We're still run by truckers to this day. Todd Spencer, our president, was a trucker. Todd's been here for a long, long time. I was a trucker for 25-plus years. My board of directors who set policy and guide us, there's 20, 22 board of directors. They're all either actively driving or retired for trucking. So we're still overseen and run by truckers to this day, which is pretty much the only um, association I know of that can say that. Um, pretty novel idea to think that you know if someone's going to advocate for truckers they probably should have done the job hint lobbyists this whole trucker week and, and trucker appreciation week you know the people that started this they're the ones who's pushing back against paying truckers i mean one of the big legislations we've been trying to get through if you want to show appreciation to truckers and it starts a congress remove this stupid regulation that trucker drivers should not receive overtime an employee driver if he works more than 40 hours a week and we all know they all do he should get paid for it they give away 20 30 hours a week every week at a shipper or a receiver waiting to load or unload or sitting in traffic all this stuff that they never get paid for and you know the companies that do pay their drivers correctly, pay their carriers by the, for what they do it all the time, and, and they're making a decent wage. They don't have the turnover rate that we constantly hear about our industry. And these people have a very, very good safety rating and aren't having the accidents and stuff that some of these other folks who like to scream this bullshit about driver shortage and all this other stuff that really isn't true. You know, these companies don't have these problems. So if you really, really want to help safety Congress and other folks in the trucking industry out there, let's start paying people what they're worth and valuing the man and woman behind the wheel. That's the biggest problem in this industry. We play no place, no value on those people. So, Louie, when we talk on cents per mile about the driver shortage, you have to use the air quotes <laughs> so people know that we're making fun of it. <laughs> uh, and you're right. You know, if people want to appreciate the drivers, just pay them. Everyone shows up to work for a reason to make, to make a living. You want to show appreciation. It starts with paying them fair wages. Uh, it's ludicrous that we have to have bills for bathroom access, that we have to lobby for fair wages. I mean, it's ludicrous. It's insanity. 
it's all ludicrous. I mean, fortunately, um, you know, our former president and pre now running President Trump, he brought up the end of last week about that people shouldn't be taxed for their overtime. So we've been trying to reach out, and I wish that he'd pay a little attention and realize that truckers don't get paid. That's some of the argument, you know, truckers don't get even get paid overtime in the first place. Yeah, before you can worry about getting taxed on overtime, can we at least get it? Yeah, exactly. I'm sure truckers would gladly pay the tax if they could at least get the money in the first place. But, you know, it's I, I always come back to the fact the first time I took this job in 2017, first time I ever testified was in the Senate hearing the entire conversation was safe places for truckers or for cattle trucks to haul for the cows to get proper rest feed and nutrition no one wanted to talk about the trucker behind the wheel that was hauling those cows and finally i got to say that you know we've heard all this stuff i'm concerned about cows why are we not hearing concern about the man or woman behind the wheel because real people do this well, and I think that's the, the common theme and topic is these are real people. They have real responsibilities. They want to be treated with respect. And by the way, for those that put it in their job ads, respect is not a job perk. You know, you've heard Paul say that multiple times on the show. You don't get to list that as a perk. Uh, that That's just part of being a human being and showing common respect. Um, so you heard it, you know, pay your drivers start there with showing them respect and if you want to show them appreciation or you want to support o oida hey, louie how would they find you guys um it's very simple oida.com is our website 816-229-5791 is our call in anybody's any question call and ask for me i'm glad to talk to anybody finally i always want to tell people go to fightingfortruckers.com that's where you see what we're fighting for on the advocacy front and fighting for truckers and you can message your lawmakers on any of those issues right there you can type your own message in whatever we have some information there you can send as well i encourage people truckers especially out there oh, we can't win these battles with money because we don't have it we're small we represent small business small business margins are tight it takes numbers and votes and that that wins overall that beats trump's money every day if you have it so be active, reach out to your lawmakers, know who they are, be respectful, but tell them how your problems are. And I would just like to throw out there a challenge for anybody in the trucking industry, whether you're an association or a trucking company or whatever, if you want to appreciate truckers, do it all year, pay them right, support stuff like the Got Truckers Act, the bathroom bill, and some of these other bills out there that directly affect the lives of truckers, the parking, all this stuff. We need to pass this stuff and get this on and give the men and women behind the wheel what they deserve, period. That's awesome. And before I let you go, you are the first guest of the show, and you have a pretty uh, big voice. So if you had to choose who's your favorite person on the show, myself or Paul, who would you pick? <laughs> well... I'll tell you what, I think you both are charming in your own separate ways, but Paul, you got the best jokes. Thanks, man. Ow! Oh. <laughs> <laughs> the dad jokes came for the win. You're catching up, Paul. I know. Uh, I think Louie counts as like three, so I'm here for it. No, I don't know about that. His, his, his voice might not be as big as I thought. <laughs> hey, Louie, I appreciate you, bud. Hey, thanks for having me always. Be safe out there, truckers. Hot Seat Services has Rent-A-Recruiter. Wait! Hey, Michael, have you heard that Hot Seat Services Rent-A-Recruiter service will place their staff in your organization similar to a temporary hire model? No way, what else does it do? Follow me, I have to tell everyone. They take leads in existing databases to put new hires into your business's trucks. Well, shit on me timbers! What else? Come on! Their model is more cost efficient because their recruiters are trained and can get your pipeline flowing easier and faster. No way. Anything else? No matter how many hires they make, it's a set cost per week, so the more they get, the better their client's cost per hire gets. Holy sh**! For more information and to find out for yourself, go to hotseatservices.com. Man! I feel like every time Louie talks, I feel like I just went to church. Uh, that was beautiful. Um, and I, I, uh, we have some hot takes, but I mean, he pointed it out. The origin of truck driver appreciation week stems with a lot of people who do make their lives much harder. But, uh, speaking of 
people who make drivers' lives harder. There is a Broker Carrier Summit coming up, which is full of amazing people. That was not a bad joke, just a bad transition. Who's our next guest, Charles? We got Dan Lindsay. Uh, he's the president and founder of the Broker Carrier Summit. Welcome to Sense Per Mile, Dan. Hey, thanks for having me, Charles. Can you guys see me okay? My camera's a little wonky. No, no, you, you're in clear. And, 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 you know, generally, you know, to Paul's point, when we hear brokers in a conversation, uh, there's not a lot of good things to say. They made some of the hottest takes. But in your situation, you got some exciting stuff cooking over there. Yeah, Broker Carrier Summit was formed on the premise that broker carrier relationships are traditionally and historically trash. Uh, and, uh, instead of continuing to hear people complain about it on both sides, valid or invalid, we decided to actually do something about it. And so last year we got together with a few pe people in the industry and said, Hey, just join us in Indianapolis for a one day symposium brokers and carriers. Let's get together. Let's talk about, uh, the different perspectives that we have in the industry. Let's get some networking in and let's see if we can actually work to repair the rift between brokers and carriers. And since then, just the momentum and the interest level in the industry has just taken taken off. Well, I think that's important because there is no short supply of people out there that want to complain about things. But there is a short supply of people trying to bring solutions. So I think it's interesting that you, instead of sitting there and just joining the bandwagon and like, this is the way it is, you went out there to try to do something about it. And it's been successful. We're going to be there. Yeah, you're, you're coming to Fort Worth in October, so it's going to be fantastic. Well, one of the things that, that is interesting, too, is that people want their voices to be heard. That's why all the complaining exists in the first place, right? That's why drivers and carriers are complaining about brokers, and that's why brokers are complaining about carriers and drivers, right? They want their voice to be heard, and we give them a platform to do that, where their voice is valued as opposed to just screaming at the sky of social media. Uh, they get an actual opportunity to interact with the brokers that they may or may not be bashing online. Uh, and vice versa. So it's been a really good experience. Well, we did an episode. Uh, it's by far always one of our favorite ones to do, and our viewers love it. It's the broker tells all. And we poll our driver audience. They send us a bunch of questions, and then we ask a series of brokers. So we had Paul from Freight Caviar. We had Robert Bain on. And then we had Sage, which you can imagine gives some spi spicy <laughs> takes on things. Um, and, and you see those people take those avenues a lot. Uh, you know, they, they go on social media, they make either memes or jokes, or it turns into all out online X brawl. But here you've managed to bring two unlikely parties together at one conference. I can't imagine the first year's insurance amount. Uh, to, <laughs> to one conference, put them in one room and then give them a stage. <laughs> yeah well that, that was one that was one of the concerns actually is like you're going to do this and bring brokers and carriers into the same room and and no one's going to get hurt that was the big big concern and it's a conference so there is some amount of alcohol at the end of these things so i mean that that kudos to you sir it, it, if i could, it can share a story from the first event it was a one-day symposium in indianapolis because we didn't know what was going to happen with this so we said let's come into indianapolis for one day we had 35 people in the room and another a more 35 more online. And uh, we went around the room and asked everybody what their name was, where they were from and why they were here. The first guy gets up, big trucker. Uh, I think he's from the East coast, maybe Jersey or, or Philly. And he said, I'm here because I hate brokers. It was like, hey, we're starting off on the absolute right foot. Uh, this is Clear communication. Exactly. The therapy session has begun. Uh, but the next thing he said has literally come to define the entire uh, modus operandi of the summit is I hate brokers, but I've never met one. And the question that we asked was how many other carriers out there can say that? And the answer is quite a lot. Most carriers have not met their brokers, which is wild to me because the brokers are their customers. And if you're a broker, if you don't have carrier relationships that are worth anything, you don't serve your customers as well as you should. So it was just wild to me that, that was the reality. Yeah. So, I mean, you guys got s some interesting history there, and, and that's become the foundation of the event. And, and the momentum on this event has grown. I mean, I, I've got major regrets that this will be my first one, but I'm super excited that I get to be there. And it's not too late to send Paul's invite, by the way. <laughs> <laughs> uh, but yes, we're going to be there covering it. And some of the topics I was looking at is the, the dynamic between carriers and brokers, how carriers can build their businesses using brokers and the importance of freight fraud prevention. 
you know, th- those are some hot button topics. Yeah. One of the things that we've done from the beginning is we've not shied away from the hard conversations. In fact, one of the things we said from day one was the person to bring up the conversation owns the narrative. So if you can, if you can bring up the conversation and have the conversation on purpose, you get the opportunity to actually cha- shape or change the narrative around those topics. So we lean into the hard issues and we do so in a way that's intentional and authentic. Those are two of our guiding principles, intentionality and authenticity. And the way that works out at the summit is people actually have more conversations than we have presentations. So we don't have keynotes per se for the purpose of having keynotes. We don't have panels for the purpose of just stacking questions to the panelists. We actually have panels panels and have keynotes for the purpose of engaging conversation, not just after the event, but while they're in the room. Like have a carrier stand up and say, hey, why do brokers always do this? And have a broker stand up and say, well, we never do that. What are you what are you talking about? Uh, and so it allows and fosters this good, solid communication. And we've seen a lot of partnerships grow and be formed from those interactions. Yeah. And that's what I've noticed is the conversations around this is the relationships that have been built and the foundation, how it keeps expanding. Uh, I'm looking forward to, we're going to be broadcasting the show from there and uh, we're going to talk to a lot of great people, but for those people that don't know where to find you, how can they find you or the organization? Yeah, you can go to www.brokercarriersummit.com, click on the events tab, and uh, you can learn as much as you want to learn about the summit. You can also email us at contact at brokercarriersummit.com or fill out our contact us form in a way to get involved. Awesome. Well, thanks for coming on the show, and I look forward to seeing you next month. You too, Charles. Thanks, guys. Well, it's been a great show, and it's time to go. Thank you for tuning in to Sense Per Mile. I'm your host, Charles Gracie. And I'm your co-host, Paul Gibson. See you next time.